Good evening, Zoomers. Praise God, we don't want you to miss out. <laughs> no, it's not a hot flush. It's the power of God in the house. That's what it is. <laughs> Praise God. Right. I've been getting touched by the Lord today. And, uh, you know, my day is full of ministry, sometimes on the phone, sometimes face to face. And, um, and I just, I'm getting tired of seeing God's people fall by the wayside who are fully on fire and all of a sudden start doubting their walk. And I've got to tell you, that's happening a lot at the moment because we're in the valley of decision. You know, we give our hearts to the Lord and we carry on in our lives. Like we've got our piece of paper, we're cool, we're going to make it. But I've got to tell you, there's so many thousands and thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of people that need to know Christ. And they're depending on us to open our mouths. <laughs> And unless the Lord opens a door for you, we're, we're pushing a barrow uphill. You know, we're, we're doing it tough to get to, to speak to people. But I've learned over the years that if I prepare my heart before the day starts, then all the warfare's already done. i just got to walk into whatever he's ordained for me that day. And then I'll see the glory of God or I'll see the power of God in the meetings. I get people come and prophesy to me continually saying, you know, God's shown me you're going to another level. Well, I've got to tell you, that's a lot of bunkum. <laughs> you know, I've already been given everything I need. Everything I need. Some people hunger and thirst after God, and that's wonderful. The Bible says you should. But it's not to go to another level. It's to fulfill the call that you've got on your life. You know, most people are looking for something out there. They haven't dealt with what's in front of them. <laughs> and and I, 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 I've got to tell you, I look in wonderment sometimes at that. And I remember when I first came into the kingdom, I was so hungry I would have eaten the, the, uh, the seat there. You know, <laughs> I was so hungry for God, I, I would just chase him with every fibre of my being. Do you hear me? every fibre of my being. And, and so I grew in the Lord. And I've got to tell you, I haven't made it in the shade. In fact, I reckon I'm, I'm gone backwards. <laughs> and I know the Lord, and I know the word of knowledge, and I know his spirit, and I know the things of God. And yet, you know, there are times when I feel hungry and that I need more, and yet I don't. In 2 Peter 1, he says, all things have been given to me. All things have been given to me, pertaining to life, that through his great and precious promises I can become a partaker of the very nature of Jesus. No, not now, Pete, not now, not right now. The very nature of God. I've got to tell you, I, I'm hungry for the glory of God to fall in these meetings. That's what I'm hungry for. I'm hungry for the glory of God. I remember those Strathalbyn meetings and the ones down at uh, the RSL Hall we used to hire down there in Malang. We used to go every week to those towns and do a meeting every week. And that's how we end up meeting up with all the guys from Strath and, and uh, different towns. And we do healing and salvation rallies in all these towns that God told us to pray for. And when we'd go, we would bring the glory of God in that town. But I've got to tell you, we made enemies. And who would have thought you'd make enemies doing the work of God? And the thing that scared the living daylights out of me was the religious people were the ones we were making enemies of. They, they were frightened that we would come in. People were getting healed in mass, not just one or two, but we used to see some wonderful things in those meetings. Absolutely wonderful things. And I started getting hungry for the glory of God at that time. I wanted to know because he told me that he would supply all my needs 
according to his riches in glory. And I started to understand that I had to reach that place. When people come and prophesy to me, say, Raph, you know, we see you going to another level, they don't know what they're talking about. They have no idea about what they're saying. So I know they're prophesying to me in the flesh then. But it seems a nice thing to say. You know, brother, you're going to another level. Well, mate, I haven't done with the level I'm at yet. <laughs> in fact, I feel I've still got to climb through this. And then the Holy Spirit started to, started to give me understanding. And it's not about levels. It's about watching what Jesus did and seeing him. And he walked in different dimensions on a daily basis. So I'm not going to go into another level. I'm just going to go into another dimension, a parallel dimension. Oh, I tell you, if you ever get hold of what I'm talking about right now, it's going to change the way you walk, the way you see things, that when you pray you're going to start seeing answers. It's a dimension. You know, you want healing in this place? Enter the dimension of healing. God said to me, he said, whatever you preach, Raph, I'll manifest. And he started to show me this is the key to manifesting his glory. I'm going to preach to you about the glory of God tonight because I want to see the glory. If I want to see healing, I'll preach about healing. If I want to see deliverance, I'll preach about deliverance. Whatever I preach, he will manifest because we have the same power that God has given to us as is inherent in him. He created the world with a word and he had faith to have that. And we're the product of his faith. We are the product of what he spoke. That's how he created. And we're to follow him. He's our template. He's the way we should be walking. And all I know is I've got to find the dimension I need to walk in for whatever I'm going for at that time. If I'm going to go and see someone who's demon-oppressed, then I've got to spend time with the Lord to find out what the key is to that, and that's the dimension I've got to get into. What I mean by dimension? Well, he taught me about dimensions in Traralgon. We used to go to Traralgon and minister with a wonderful pastor. I'm just trying to think what his name was. He was a Je Al Alwyn Hartwig. What a beautiful man. He was a COC pastor. And he had a hunger, he had a huge hunger for seeing the miraculous in God. And I think, Phil and Pauline, you introduced us to him, didn't you? you? He came to your church. We were preaching at your church. He came to see what we were carrying and then he invited us to Traugan. That's how we first met him. And I grew to love this man. He was hardcore. You know, he was, there was no namby-pamby with old Alvin. He, he was full on. And yet he was as, as hungry as could be to see if he could touch the things we were walking in. And we'd stay at his place. So Ricky and I'd stay at his house. And we would always be talking about the miraculous. And we would see it in the meetings. We would see the miraculous in his meetings. We would see the miraculous with all those Traralgon churches. There was a Traralgon, what was the other two towns? Uh, Sale, no, no, there was three in the triangle. Morwell, yeah, and uh, no, Morwell, Traralgon, and it was in that, it was all in that Latrobe Valley. Bensdale, Benz, yeah, that was down further, yes, Bensdale was one of them. But these guys had come together and they would do meetings in Traralgon. And, and the unity that these pastors would bring into those meetings was absolutely wonderful. They didn't know what they were doing, but they were doing something wonderful. They were bringing unity and agreement and they would see the glory of God come into those meetings. And I started to see the glory in those meetings and I could move in it because I could see it. Now the glory of God, the, the Hebrew word for glory is doxa. It means the weight of the glory of God. It means the weight of God's presence. The glory of God is his presence in a place. That's what it is. It's his presence. Praise God. People say to me, how do you get in the presence of God? Well, I can do it so easily because I spend time and practice that. 
I want you to close your eyes and enter straight away into his presence. <laughs> oh, glory to God. <laughs> He's here right now, and that glory is here. <laughs> and I'm expecting that glory to manifest in this room right now. Close your eyes and just enter into God. I'll give you an exercise. Oh, glory to God, he's here. <laughs> he said he'd turn up tonight. He said he'd turn up if we preached it. I want you to see the Lord a metre in front of you, standing right in front of each and every one of you, separately. <laughs> he's there, he's here, I tell you, he's here. <laughs> I want you to see your heart as a cuckoo clock with doors on it. Just to give you a visual. I want you to put your hands on your heart on both those doors. Now I want you to look at Jesus and say this to him. Jesus, come into my heart. What's he doing? He's walking straight in. He's walking straight in. Now you've got the glory of God coming into your life. Oh, Jesus. Now that exercise, do every time you come into your prayer closet. That exercise brings the glory of God in. It gives you a visual on how to achieve the glory of God. See, now we're all bringing him into our own lives personally right now. Praise God. This is practical Christianity today. God wants you to practice the presence of God. I read a book by a guy called Brother Lawrence once, and that man lived in the presence of God, and I thought, if he can, so can I, and so can you. And it's a key for people who want to walk with God, full-on, fair dinkum people who want to walk with their Creator. And as I started realising this, and we'd go to meetings and we'd see the glory come down the meetings, I've got to tell you, some of the Strathalbyn meetings, I would just wish you could have recorded them on video. We'd have the whole meeting down on its face, not because we told them to, because they would drop and didn't want to touch the glory of God, and they'd be laying flat out on their faces. The whole room. And we'd be there for half hour or longer just in that, in that position. Nothing said. Nothing spoken. Just God touching his people because his glory had turned up. And we saw incredible manifestations of being, people being stuck to the floor by their hair. <laughs> You know, it was just it was an amazing outpouring that we had in those meetings. That hall used to fill up just with people from Strathalbyn. Alan Bell would bring a bus up from here and we'd take a whole bus load with us. No one wanted to miss out on those Thursday night meetings because they were so filled with the glory of God. And Malang and Strathalbyn, Belvedere, we just used to do these little towns and hire the halls and we'd go in these little halls which were... They were, they, were, they were wells that had been tapped before. In fact, one of Bricky's uncles used to minister at Belvedere. In fact, helped to build it. <laughs> Is that right? Was he an uncle or a grand, grand uncle? Great grandfather. Praise God. And there's a photo of him up on the, on the, on the what's name. But the glory of God, these people have learned to worship God and the presence of God still there. This piece of land here, I don't know about if you can sense God on this land, but every time I walk on this land, I know I'm home. You know why? Because the glory of God's here. It hasn't got any fences, it hasn't got any walls. God comes in and out whenever he wants to. People see visions of angels on this land and they tell us about them. Why? Because it's been set apart for God. We're going to see the glory of God 10,000 strong on this land. Okay, 10,000 strong. That whole field, you'll see them, people coming just to worship God. 
and we'd be doing outdoor stuff. And he started teaching us levels of this dimension that we want to walk in, the dimension of worship. I want to learn about worship. I'm a worshipper at heart. I don't like getting up here. I like getting in my own little closet or in my car and singing my lungs out to God. I like being quiet with God. And, and whatever mood I'm in at the time, that'll be an expression of what's in there. If, I, if I'm in a, in a joyful, exuberant mood, I'll be praising God like a crazy man. Or, or if I'm feeling mellow and I just want to touch that beautiful place of the open door and the heart, then I'll just quiet it down. Tonight's the music we've been playing has ushered in what's in here right now. Amen? It's a dimension of God. We're preaching the dimension of God. The glory, the glory, the practical outpouring, supply. How many of you know there's a dimension of supply in the glory? People say to us, how do you live? I live really well. You know, I came here to this place. I'd lost everything. God stripped me of everything. And, I, and a lot of you aren't going to want to hear this. <laughs> but before he could start building into me, he had to strip me of everything. Remember, Ozzy, you used to come to my place while I was building it. Can you remember that? I'd be doing my stone, my veranda, slate or whatever I was doing. And everything I did, I did with second-hand materials and i just work. Recycle, second-hand, whatever it is. Whatever I could get. I'd go and do a job. Edsel House in Victor Harbour. One of the Christian brothers owned it. He wanted to strip it and subdivide the land. So I said, I'll give you a hand. I ripped off all the roof battens. I said, what are you going to do with these? He said, I'm going to dump them. He said, no, you're not. I'm taking them home. Jar of battens, full of nails, looked like rubbish to somebody else. I took them home. He had some um, slate. It's my veranda today. Crazy pay veranda. <laughs> I took it. I could afford a bag of cement <laughs> and I wanted to do something. So I built the veranda. And it's beautiful. I, I like sitting out there sometimes just looking at it because it grew something in me. It started to change something on the inside of me. I had to do something. I wasn't just hanging that it's going to drop out of heaven. I was in heaven. Even doing that work, I was in the place of heaven. I'd have music going. I'd be listening to Rodney Howard Brown or some other preacher and I'd be getting filled up. I'd be getting filled up and I, I grew in that place. But I can remember the glory of God was on me. The heaviness of the glory of God was on me. And I would I was practice the presence of God. Say practice. You know, doctors practice, you know that? They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> they practice. It's true. They've got to go through certain things to, to break down what they think is right, you know? And they're not always right. <laughs> but they practice. But as ministers of God, we need to practice the presence of God because that's all you've got. And that's more than enough. That's everything. Everything you need is in the presence of God. 2 Peter 1, what does he say? All things have been given to me pertaining to life. All things, say all. That means nothing's lacking. People who keep striving go, I want more. You've already got everything you've got you need. I want more. You've got it. <laughs> Claim the word of God, the promises of God, and see them come to pass. Remember, what you preach, what you speak, you'll have. What you speak out of your mouth, you're going to see manifested in your life. Phil's praying for youth. Is that right, Philip? Youth. Yeah. No, no. This is your main prayer in your life. You want to? Yeah. Youth. And it's showing. It shows on your face. 
Okay, because it's manifesting. It's starting to end. Just watch, check his face out. <laughs> it's it's manifesting. Hey? Eh? Yep. Yes, it is. I, I know. I know that. We've talked about this at times. There's a glory for making you younger. Ladies will be the ladies will be interested in this. <laughs> There's a glory for healing. There's a glory for deliverance. There's a glory realm for supply. There's a glory realm that you can, if you can find it, you can have it. And if you speak it, you'll find it. Your spoken word or the spoken promise will lead you into this place. You know, I, I wanted to know how to minister to people. So I got inquisitive and I said, Lord, I need to see into the spirit so I can know what I'm ministering to. And he said, well, use my word, Raf. He said, my word is a discerner between the soul and the spirit. Now, when you're ministering to this person, he said, poke your head in. So I did. I poked my head into the spirit realm. And I looked to the left and I could see the soulish things in that person's life. And I looked to the right and I could see the spiritual inheritance that they had. And I could see that the word of God was dividing this. And so I want to know, how do I get in that whenever I want to? He said, you can only get into that by the power of my Holy Spirit. He said, it's a dimension you need to walk in. He said, what do you think I walked in when I was walking on the earth? I said, another dimension. He said, yes. He said, when I had to raise the dead, I had to walk into that place and raise that person up. And that place was the glory. All things pertaining to life. Whatever you need, it's in the glory. You shall supply all my needs according to your riches in glory. Get hold of that. There's your key. Unlocks the glory realm. You shall supply all my needs according to your riches in glory. I just walked into that dimension. I'm in Traralgon. I bought the huts here. I had no money when we bought them. An old mate of mine, you see those two paintings up there, Tom Reed. Tom's not with us now, he's up in heaven with the Lord. But Tom was a beautiful Irishman, beautiful man of God and a good friend. In fact, he was one of my close confidants. Whenever I needed to go confess anything, he's one of the guys I'd go confess to because I could trust him to keep it. You know, people go and confess stuff to other Christians and you're like lambs going to slaughter. My God, you want to hope they're not big-mouthed Christians because that's how you'll be judged by other people. <laughs> but you better go to someone you can trust who's a Christian. Amen? Some people, you tell them something, they can hardly wait to get down the road to speak to someone else. That's one of the first things God looks at with a prophet. He wants to know whether he can trust you or not. You know that? He's going to tell you stuff. And then you're going to be known in heaven by how much you can keep to yourself and pray into, not how much you blab. Is this helping anybody here? Amen? Because this will help keep you safe. Praise God. I don't care how holy the person is you're looking at. Sometimes holy people haven't controlled their gobs yet. <laughs> All right? That's pretty plain English, isn't it? Control your gob. Thank you, Lord. One of the first lessons I had to learn, I had to learn about musicians. I had to get into that dimension of learning about musicians. I've preached about the musicians, what he taught us. You know, the musicians are front line. Very important in God. It's one of the first things you teach anybody if you're going to end up working in a church. They have to examine their own hearts before they get up there because whatever they're carrying, they'll give it out. <laughs> Guaranteed. All right? Really important. Really, really, really important. Remember, what comes out of your mouth is going to manifest. If this is the best lesson you learn, on the manifestation 
you can create things with your mouth. I'm preaching about the glory now. I bought those huts because Tom said to me, he said, Raph, he said, I was praying. He said, I want to go buy those huts. They were for sale in Victor Harbour. They were the office of a builder who built uh, Rosetta Village. You know, the retirement village there? That was the offices. And he said, they're for sale. The guy wants 30000 for them. I said, what are you telling me for, Tom? He said, well, God's been speaking to me. He said, you're looking for a building for this place? I said, yes, I am. He said, he told me to tell you that I'm not allowed to buy that for myself, but to let you know that it's for you. And I said, all right, let me pray about it. And so I got in the prayer closet and the Lord said, yes, I want you to go and talk to that man and uh, you're going to end up with those huts here on the block. So I started to understand that dimension of the glory of God. It was already prepared for me. And it took a prophet of the Lord to come and call me and say, hey, this is for you. And so I went down there. I had no money, which is the way he's always worked with us. He likes it when we are stretched. He's building something in us. He's teaching us. When we're stretched, he's teaching us. If you're going through a tough time, good. Rejoice because he's teaching you something. He's testing you. He's not persecuting you. He's actually testing you. And you, sometimes I'm going to preach one day on how to tell the difference between a test and a persecution. Because sometimes God is testing us and we need to know what to do, how to handle that. That's another dimension or realm of the glory. And Jesus used to walk into those realms and get what he needed. That's why he could say, I only do what I see my Father in heaven doing. The realm of the glory is the realm of the Father. It's the realm of the presence. And he practiced the presence of the Father. We practice the presence of Jesus. Amen? The realm of the presence of the Father. Well, I can remember when I went in that prayer closet, he said, yep, go and see the man. So I went and saw the man and... Um, I said to him, I said, mate, I said, I hear you've got two octagons for sale. Can I have a look at them? He said, yes, certainly. Went and had a look at them and I thought, they're a bit small, but they'll do for what we want for the time being. And I said, how much after for them? He said, 30,000. I said, yeah, well, I said, I'll offer you 25,000 for them. He said, no way, mate. He said, why should I give them to you for 25,000? He said, when I've... I've already had offers for 25 before. And I said to him, I said, because if ever you've got a problem with your children, you'll have somewhere to be able to send them. <laughs> we'll minister to them and set them free. And he looked at me and said, what do you mean? So I told him. He said, okay. And I said, um, I'll tell you what I'll do. I said, see how skinny these arms are? I said, I'll give you an Indian wrestle. And if I win... I'll pay you 25, and if you win, I'll give you 30. And he looked at me. He said, I, I can't do business like that. And I said, then you better give it to me <laughs> for 25,000. And uh, he just looked at me. He said, I can't believe I'm doing this. He said, you got a deal. I said, do you want me to sign anything? He said, no. He said, I, um, I'll take your word for it. I said, thank you. I shook hands with him, and I said, now I better tell you the next thing. I haven't got the money. And like he's, he's totally shocked. And uh, I said, but I'll have it on the day. I'll have it on the day that I pick them up. And he said, well, he said, if you can get them off this block in five weeks, he said, you've got a deal. I said, I can do that. I said, I'm a builder by trade. I've got people who come and help me. And I said, and I'll organise it, cranes, trucks, whatever we need. I know how to do this thing. So I end up getting them for twenty five thousand dollars. Now on the day, on the day, I'd already invoked the glory of God when I did that deal. I didn't go in there blindly. I had more money than the bank owns, but I only needed twenty five thousand dollars. How do I get more money than the bank owns? Because my father is the banker. 
He's also my dad, and that's my inheritance <laughs> in Christ. And so I knew I had it. I didn't know how it was coming, but I had an assurance in my heart because I'd touched that dimension of the glory. He, g- he gave it to me on the day. I had trucks, I had cranes organised. I'd prepared the footings down there and they just had to drop those things on four points on each octagon and so I could tie the, the floors down to them. And as, I, as we did that, um, money just poured in that morning. People came with two, three thousand, four thousand bucks. Well, you know, people who were in our fellowship here, everybody wanted to get involved. But I never asked once for people to raise money. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in churches who say, we're going to have a building program, we're all going to put into this. That's a flesh realm. And good things might happen out of that. But I want to tell you, if you want the perfect will of God in your life, jump into the spirit, jump into that place where the glory realm is and get what you need. Speak it out because it will come. Maybe not as quickly as you want it. Maybe not four weeks before so you feel really tidy about it. Sometimes he'll take you right to the wire. He'll take you right to the very minute you need it. And that's been my experience in everything that we've done. You have to see it before you get it. You hear me? You have to see it before you get it. That's the realm of the glory. Well, this, this particular testimony doesn't finish there. I was in Taralgon doing meetings. We were seeing miracles pour out. The glory of God was being poured out in miracles in that place. Brick and I went to a breakfast. There was a man with a stroke. They brought him up for prayer and I had two pastors standing behind me wanting to know what the word was because I grabbed the guy and I told him to open his hand. It didn't open immediately. Was it second or third shot? I can't remember. Eh? Third time. That happened to me in Israel, same thing. Third time. I had to persist because you're going to get tested even on your faith level. So I persisted. Open in Jesus' name. And all of a sudden this man's head just stayed open. Hit his leg. Yes, he did, didn't he? And he's, he's in awe and amazement. He's just walked out of a stroke. He, yeah, he started crying. But the thing that really stirred me up was these two behind me, they were waiting to listen to see what the key was. As if, as if there's a, a method in this. There's no method. It's the realm of the glory of God. There is no method. People pray for people with unforgiveness because they got arthritis, they think that's the method. No, it's not. You might get some arthritic people who have had problems with unforgiveness, yes. But it might be that they've just got toxic thinking, you know. You, you just don't know what it is that's going to grab them. And you've got to be alert to hear that, and that's the only place you get it, in the realm of healing or in the realm of deliverance. Sometimes deliverance and healing go together and you've got to meet those two realms. But you've got to understand you're walking into, you're not climbing a ladder and going higher. Though in Revelation 4.1 he says, come up here, he says to John. Come up and see. See, John starts from that place of glory. He's up there. You know, all the training you get, all the stuff he's dealing with you, where you're peeling things off. That's your training session. And when you get to a place where you can just step in the glory of God, open those doors, close yourself off. I'm trying to teach you how to reach it. It's based on your time with the Lord. You're already dealing with yourself. Your time with the Lord's going to deal with you and him. Your time for miracles is going to deal with their problems and you're going to tap in and get it for them. Do you understand this? That's what the realm's for. You step into that realm. 
Well, I've got to tell you, when all that money came in for those things, I got 25000 just as I asked for. Only thing I didn't take into account, I had to pay a truck and a crane, $5,000. And I had to pay them on the spot. So out of all the money that came, I took it out of there and said, here, mate, there's your five grand. Left me 20. I went down to the guy who was selling me the, the octagons and said, mate, I said, uh, I said, everything I prayed for came in, but I've only got 20,000 to give you right now. And he looked at me. I said, mate, I didn't calculate for the crane and the, and the, uh, and the truck hire. He said, that's all right, Raf. He said, you got them off the block in the five weeks. He said, I stood to lose them totally. No money at all. If they were out there any longer than five weeks. He said, so I, you've kept your word. I said, well, I, I owe you five still, but it, it'll come in because I'm asking for it now. And I said, so as soon as I get it, I'll come down and see you. He said, Fine, he was as happy, he was so happy, this man. We cleaned the site up perfectly for him and he handed over a bare site, which is what he needed to do to fulfil his contract. Here, we've got a $25,000 octagon, or two of them. And so it was a month and I'm thinking, thank you, Lord, for the 5000 so I can fi finish fixing up this man as I promised. And I'm in Traralgon working. And I'm asking the Lord for the message for the night. I'm laying on a bed in the pastor's house. Now this pastor, this Alvin, he was a gem. I loved working with him. He was full on. He's not going to give up for anything, right? If he's after a miracle, he's going to get it. And he would speak like that. He wouldn't always see what he was, he was doing, but he would speak like that. He was man after my own heart. And I said, you know, Whatever we ask for, we'll get, according to John 15, verses 7 and 8. If you abide in me, my word abides in you. Ask whatever you will, it will be done for you. And you bring glory to the Father, bear much fruit, and you'll show yourself to be my disciple, says the Lord. So we're in his place. We said, let us demonstrate for you. We're having breakfast. Ricky and I are at the breakfast table, and she had a dish on the breakfast bar. She was a beautiful lady. What, what was her name? Ruth. Um, my sister-in-law, Ruthie, her, her operation was successful this morning. They got every bit of the tumour, oh, praise God. She was standing up within the hour. <laughs> praise God. Anyway, this Ruth, Ruth Hartwig, what a lovely lady. She used to give us cheek, you know, like she's just a, a cheeky lady. She's a beautiful girl. And um, we're saying, see those, they were, were they pansies? African violets, those little flowers on this petri dish, withered, dead. She should have chucked them out probably three days before, you know. Dry as a bone, weren't they? Yep, they were dead. They were hanging there with a throat cut. Yeah. <laughs> These flowers. And uh, I said, we're going to pray for those and revive them. We're going to pray life. Through God's great and precious promises, we've been given all things pertaining to life. So life, we speak to you right now, and we all entered that realm of releasing the glory of God on those flowers. And they're going, oh, <laughs> look at them. I said, yeah, you'll see. We went to church. We did a meeting. We had a powerful meeting, powerful meeting. People getting healed in the meeting. We got home, Ruth screamed with delight as she walked in the door. Those African violets were brand spanking new, sitting up in the dish. They looked like they'd just grown, didn't they? They are fresh and new. And God was proving to them that these realms we're speaking about, these realms that we're speaking about are for you today. Pardon? Yes, and then she had the miracle for a daughter as well, straight after. Now, we were proving a point to her, okay? We're rat bags. We like proving points. And she had a miracle. She saw those daisies. That was enough to spark faith in her. 
You know, you can't have faith without repentance. Do you realise that? I'm going to speak to you about that. You want the glory of God? Examine your own heart. Set the line in the sand and cross it and decide you're not going backwards. Is this helping? You want to touch this realm, this is what it's going to cost you. Now I'm in that house preparing because I'm still needing 5,000 bucks to finish pay that man for those octagons. And he gave me a job to do. He said, um, I want you to pray for the people back home. People think we've got to be here to pray for them and, and to deal with the day-to-day runnings of this place. We don't. We can tap in and find out what's happening here. I know most of you don't believe that that's possible, but it's very possible. This is his place. He cares about it. So when we have to run this place, we get to know things. Oh, anyway, you'll know that if you've been around us long enough. <laughs> we get to know things from the Lord. And so these, this uh, problem with the money was far from my mind while I was over there. But what was happening in the meeting here, I had to deal with someone in this place. So I phoned him up. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, get this from uh, John, the book of John, the wedding feast of Cana. In fact, let's read it. The book of John is never wrong. Amen. Uh -huh. John 1, 11, I think it is, isn't it? 2.11, is it? Yeah, 2.11. The beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee. Now get hold of this, will you? The beginning of signs. Say the beginning of signs. Okay. Now remember, when Jesus did a sign, he's about to enter into another dimension, a parallel world. The kingdom of heaven is that. Stick your hand out. You've just stepped into the kingdom of heaven. You've just put your hand into the kingdom of heaven. Brother, it's only out there at the front. You've just put your hand into the kingdom of heaven, a parallel dimension. I'm trying to give you an understanding of these dimensions. Okay? Now, in Tarragon, the meeting the day before, they brought a man in on a bed base, a uh, mattress. He hadn't walked for two years, hadn't stood up in two years. And four blokes brought him in. It was just like the old biblical lowering him down through the roof, you know. They bring him in and I'm doing a meeting for the COC at the time. It was a COC conference, I think. And who was the guy who was the head of COC Melbourne? Craig. Craig. Lovely man, bald-headed fat fella. And I used to, I was giving him lip. I, <laughs> I was stirring him up because we were both staying in the same house. And he had a handkerchief that had come from Mexico. Dave Hogan, who had raised 200-odd people from the dead, and he'd been to a conference with them, and he had all his elders lay on a sheet at this conference, and he handed it to Pocket Knife, the head of the COC here in Adelaide. And they brought this sheet back, and they cut it up into pieces, and they handed it to all of their pastors throughout the country. And Craig had one of these sheets. And they were taking this anointing into hospitals, laying it on people, and they were getting healed immediately. Now, this guy who'd raised 200 from the dead had the same habit we had of getting up at four in the morning as a lifestyle. But you want to know how to get to the anointing? It's going to cost you. It's not free. All right? It's not free, but it's yours. All things have already been given to you. You hearing me? You just got to find them and walk in them. And I'm teaching you the key to the dimensions of glory. 
today. Oh, glory to God. The I was staying with him. He was opening up the conference. He was a keynote speaker and I was the second speaker that they were going to bring up. And I said to him while we were home that night, I'd seen him minister with this thing and he was laying it on people and, um, and God was touching them. And I said, oh, Lord, I said, that's fantastic. And you know what the Holy Spirit spoke to me? He said, if I could get one man to set his life before me, he said, there's more anointing on that one man than any sheet or any transferred anointing. He said, tomorrow you're going to show them what happens for someone who's dedicated their lives to learn this stuff and to walk in it. And he said, and you're not going to need the sheet. <laughs> And that's when he brought the guy in on that bed mattress. Well, when I was at Alvin's with Craig, I said, give me a look at that sheet, Craig. He said, there's no way I'm letting you anywhere near it. <laughs> I said, I won't knock it off. <laughs> yeah. I said, I just want to sense the anointing on it. No, he, wouldn't, he, would, oh, he was adamant he would not let me near the sheet. And so I said to him, I said, tomorrow you're going to see what happens without the sheet. I said, because if you get it direct from the Lord, it's far more powerful than something you're carrying around second hand. He went, oh, okay. So the next day, little did I know that they're bringing in this guy who'd been crippled for two years, not walking. And I'm just about to get up to walk and these guys walk in with this mattress. And the Holy Spirit says, deal with that man now before you preach. I said, oh, fair go. If I'm going to preach, at least I'm going to release something because <laughs> I'm, I'm aware of this principle. <laughs> and I said, Lord, he said, go, go down there and deal with that man. So I said, sorry, before we start, I want to show you that that piece of cloth he brought yesterday is nothing compared to what you're about to see. <laughs> I acted in faith. I knew I had to release something because I had nothing. Right? And it's good when you've got nothing. That's when he works. Okay? But you better have confidence that you're entering into that realm, that you're entering into that place. And if you've spent time with him, you'll know whether you're going into it or not. Anyway, so I said that and I walked down to the guy and I said, uh, mate, how long have you been like that? And he turned around and he said, F off. <laughs> <laughs> well, lovely ch in church, beautiful, okay. <laughs> he said, F off, and I said, um, yeah. I said, Lord, what am I going to do with this dude? And the Lord said, pick him up. So I grabbed him. He laying down, I grabbed him by his shirt, and I started lifting him up, and now he's really swearing. F off, oh, I'm in pain. <laughs> I said, mate, I said, the Lord told me he's going to heal you today. And so he shut up and he listened. And um, I said, get up. He said, no. I said, Lord, what do I do? And the Holy Spirit speaks to me. And he says, uh, bind up the spirit of um, in, uh, addiction. Bind up the spirit of addiction. And uh, I said, I bind that spirit in Jesus' name. And all of a sudden, this guy is screaming at the top of his voice. He is in agony. He is going off. He is hating me, I can tell you. <laughs> what have you done to me? What have you done to me? He's screaming. I said, mate, I said, you don't want to get up? God wants to hear you. Now you've got no choice. I said, that addiction you had, the morphine is gone. The pain is going to be there. That's not going to help you. Christ is the only one who's going to help you. Now get up. And he gets up. And he's staring at me and that poor man, I'll never forget the look on his face. His eyes were like crazed. The pain was making his eyes crazy. And I looked at him and the Holy Spirit said, yeah, look at him. He said, Raph, now I want you to pull him into this realm, into this dimension of healing. That's what he spoke to me. 
He said, I want you to understand you're bringing him into heaven. You're bringing him into my presence. Well, don't miss this little section because it's the key of release. And I said, how's it working? He said, look him in the eye, Raph. So I'm down to his level and I'm pulling him. I said, start walking, mate. And he's going, are you crazy? Like he, it was all he could do to stand. And so he shuffles a foot like that. I might get healed here tonight. And he shuffles, <laughs> and he shuffles a foot like that. And another one. And he can't go any further. He's just screaming in pain. And I kept pulling him. So his feet are still there. And I've got him like that. And the Lord spoke into my heart. He said, imagine a sheet of glass going through his body right now. He said, his legs are still here on earth at the flesh level, but you've just pulled him into my dimension. Where is the kingdom of heaven? He said, understand, you've got him halfway through. Now look at his eyes. And his eyes had cleared. The pain had reduced. He said, bring him all the way through, Raph. So I kept bringing him. I kept pulling him. And he was losing balance. He had no place to go. <laughs> he had to come through. And all of a sudden, he just looked up and I saw the glory of God on him. And God said, now get up and preach what's just happened. So I started walking towards the, uh, the mic. And before I got there, the crowd started cheering. He was running around the hall. He was running around the hall. God had touched him, brought him into that dimension. And, and he was teaching me. And I'm thinking, oh, I've got it, i got it. He said, no, you've got that, Raph. He said, that's the dimension of healing. He said, what about your problem? I said, I haven't got a problem, I'm with you. I, like, I don't, I don't worry about too many things. I've got to tell you, I don't ever think too deeply about things. It'll twist you up. You can't work God's stuff out with your head. It comes as a knowing. It comes as a, as a bit of knowledge, a bit of God's knowledge given to you. It comes as a, uh, just as a knowing. I, can't, I, can't, I don't know how to describe it any other way. But it comes. And when it does come, you'll know. <laughs> you will not doubt for a second. It doesn't matter what you're looking at. You could be looking at a, at a dam breaking and about to drown you. You're not going to drown. <laughs> you'll know. You know, you just know. And so I'm, next time I'm back and I'm about to do the next meeting the next night and I'm preparing before God. And he speaks to me about someone in my fellowship that I have to straighten out. And I'm in that book in John. The beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory. You hear that? And manifested his glory. Now there's a dimension in the glory for changing water to wine. There's a dimension in the glory for raising the dead. There's a dimension in the glory for setting a demonized person free. There's a dimension in the glory for discovering what the call of God is in your life. There are dimensions in the glory that we need to enter into because that's how Jesus worked. This is the first miracle he did that revealed what? The glory. It revealed the glory. This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory. Say manifested. Manifested means comes out of the spirit realm and it becomes a reality. Praise God. Oh, I hope this is getting through. Manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. And after this he went down and to Capernaum, he and his mother, his brothers and his disciples, and they did not stay there many days. So there's the first miracle. This was the first miracle, this beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Glory and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. You want to change people's lives? 
I was telling you yesterday about a rabbi. You, you would have had to argue 15 pages of the book against his knowledge and not gotten anywhere. But when you see the manifestation of the word of knowledge or the gifts of the Holy Spirit, there's a realm in the glory where the gifts of the Holy Spirit will manifest. Speak it out to people and you'll see it happen. You hearing me? Speak it out to people. I hate saying this, but get some balls. <laughs> you know, be bold. Just be bold. You know, don't be namby-pamby people. You've got everything you need. Speak it out. Have faith that he's backing you 100%. He backs me even though I said get some balls. Some of you are shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. But you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Get a bit of boldness about you. Speak out what he, you know he's given you. Amen? I'm nearly finished. Just for all those who've fallen asleep. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> I tell you what, if I'd heard someone preaching this when I was a young Christian, I wouldn't be able to sleep all night. Could I be thinking about it? So I learned from that that night that the first miracle Jesus ever did that revealed the glory of the Father was the wedding feast of Cana that there was a dimension he'd gone into where he could change the water into wine. And he knew that that was another dimension. It's not in this dimension of natural. It's in the dimension of the spirit. Okay? It's the normal place where we should be living. It's the place where we should be walking. It's our destination. We're heading to heaven. This is normal stuff up there. So we've got to understand that the dimensions that we're tapping into are heavenly dimensions and he knew them well he actually understood the levels of dimension that they were there and available for every person every believer has the ability to enter into this realm and so there i am worrying about what was happening here and i had to speak those scriptures over that man and this guy was in a place where he was struggling in faith. And so I told him what the Lord had spoken to me. And then as I'm about to roll over and go to sleep, God says, I haven't finished with you yet. And, and I said, yeah, I know you're speaking very closely to me, Lord, very, and describing things to me. I said, can I ask you a question then? And he said, yeah, what's the question? I said, that remaining $5,000. What's happened to it? <laughs> That's the first thing that came to my mind. And now I've opened up the realm of supply. You see, now I'm understanding. I've just opened the door to my supply. This was the first miracle that Jesus did that revealed the glory of the Father. And so now I've opened up the realm of supply and I'm saying, can you tell me what's holding it up? And what he told me shocked me. He said, you have. I said, how? I've started in faith. He said, exactly. And you've had fear that it won't come. In other words, you haven't entered the realm. Oh, just that key there will help you. Amen. You haven't entered the realm. Quiet yourself before God. Oh, he's here. Just quiet yourself before God. Get before him. He's the one that answers your request. I can't. Quiet and say, what is it you're, you're waiting for, oh, mate? The Holy Spirit's strong out here at the moment. Ask him what it is you need. Praise God. Ask him what it is you need. See, he knows that you're worried about the mundane things of this earth and he wants to supply them for you. He wants to prove himself. He wants to show you that you're living in a different place even though you're walking here on earth. And the more you set yourself to follow Christ, 
the closer you're going to get to these realms opening up. But if you keep walking here on earth and thinking you're going to get it all here and it's got to be opened up through here, I've got to tell you, you're never going to see these realms. You've got to give yourself fully over to God and trust him fully. It's the trust he's after. Once you, you, know, once you trust him, an act of faith is there in one split second. But trust is an ongoing thing. Trust is where you walk on a daily basis, whether you're seeing things happen or not. Whether you're seeing things happen or this is for Zoomers, whether you're seeing things happen or not. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So I, he said, now, he said, can you remember how you asked me? I said, no, I haven't. I can't. Said, Mate, I asked you two months ago. He said, well, I haven't forgotten. He said, you asked me to supply you that $5,000 according to my riches in glory. And made all of a sudden the two words click. I'm reading the glory and he's telling me about the glory. He said, do you remember how you asked me? I said, I do now. I asked you that you would supply me according to your riches in glory. He said, you better open up that realm of supply, boy. How do I do that? How do I do that? He said, you saw what Jesus did. He's our template. Remember, he's our template, okay? People who follow everybody in his dog and even the disciples, forget it. Jesus is our template. The others are testimonies of following Jesus. They followed Jesus. They found the place of those realms as they grew in God. As they grew in God. Amen? And that's up to us now, to grow in God. And so we get to these places. And I'm saying, now I remember. He said, okay. I said, what do I do? He said, repent of your lack of faith, that you walked in fear. I said, okay, I repent, Lord, forgive me. Now what? He said, now just reach into the glory, that realm that you need to open. It's supply realm. Say supply. I don't know about Bendigo Bank, but I've got Heaven Bank. <laughs> <laughs> I got to, if you know me, you know how I open up supply. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about anything. I, all I've got to do is do the job he's given me to do. I minister to people and out of the blue sometimes I get $20,000 or 5000 or one or two, whatever it is I need at that particular time. And that generally it's when I kick off and do something when I've got nothing. <laughs> and I know I'm in for a ride, a wonderful faith ride with God because if he's shown me to do something, I don't need money. He's got it. And I just jump into it and all of a sudden it comes and it's just like a, my faith goes through the roof. I've opened up another realm, a realm of supply. And so therefore, I ask this, Lord, I see it, what do I do? He said, reach and get it. And so I had a funny way of seeing it, okay? I see, <laughs> I see a check with wings on it flying past. It's a, well, that's my imagination. I'm into cartoons. <laughs> but that's the realm that I entered. I got it. And I know I knew I had it. You know, I've got to tell you this. I felt it. I actually felt it. I felt that I was pulling it from the spirit into the natural, and I felt it. Okay? I've felt things at times when God's given me things he gives me a manifestation so I understand what I've received. I've got it. Three minutes later, I'm in, in Traralgon. A man knocks on the door. The pastor's let him in because he's, he's harassed the pastor. And the pastor's saying, he's the guest speaker. He's, he's preparing for tonight. And the guy said, I've got to see him urgently. So he knocks on the door and he says, I've got this bloke wants to talk to you here. And I said, what's the problem? He said, I don't know. I said, bring, just bring him in. He comes in, he said, uh, are you praying for money? And I'm looking at him. And I said, well, you tell me. <laughs> because I'm not going to give you a hint. I don't want to give hints. If, it, if they're coming, it's, if it's coming from them, most of the time people, when they ask you that, it's they're hoping you'll say no. <laughs> right? If people ask you that question, 
They're fishing. They haven't heard God. And I don't want their money because generally there's a hook on that. But if they've heard God, they're going to give it to you because God's told them. All right? And when they come, I'll tell you, a blessing will fall on their lives, blessing falls on mine, and we see a miracle. And I said, why? Why are you asking? He said, because as I was walking past here, he said, God told me that you need $5,000 and I have to give it to you. I said, you've heard God. Thank you very much. <laughs> and sure enough, he came out with $5,000 cash and gave it to me. And so I was able to pay the, the hut well, as soon as I got home. I found the realm of supply. I found the realm of supply long before that, but not understanding it. Understanding, I've got to tell you, some of the stuff you're getting today, you won't hear this ever preached. It's a key that will only come by your experiencing it. All right? Just by experiencing it. But the more I get into the things of God, the more I understand there is no more levels. Everything, we've got everything. We've got the Holy Spirit. We've got everything. We need to understand how to release it. And it starts with repentance in our hearts. You hear me? You know, some people think they're walking with God and they're riddled with guilt. How can they walk with God? Deal with it. Confess it to God. Just speak it out. So I'm a sinner. But I, I tell him this every day. I'm a sinner. I'm a rotten sinner. I, know I look like a sweet person. <laughs> and you could never believe that. <laughs> but I, I speak to God every day. I say, I'm a sinner, Lord. If I can't go to sleep at night, you know, like if I've had an argument with someone, I've got to deal with that right there and then. Otherwise, I'm already in sin. I've already judged the dude. So I'm, I'm a sinner at that level. Mate, forget everything else. Mate, you don't want to know my thought life. It can be foul at times. I know you don't believe that, but it's true. And all of you are the same. <laughs> there can be absolutely foul at times. And all, I just look at what he's given me that I haven't had to pay the price for. I'm a sin. He's given me eternity. I want to serve him with all my heart. He's paid the price for me. And then he wants to teach me about these realms. And when I leave this earth, I'm just going to walk straight into heaven because I'm starting to walk in it here. And that's how you should be. There's a sweet perfume of God in this room right now. A wonderful perfume of the Holy Spirit in the room right now because of what we're teaching. I don't know if you can smell it. Some of you may be. Is anybody, can, can anybody else smell that? Yeah, it's just a perfume of the Holy Spirit here. He, he will bring it to pass. He will bring it to pass in your life as you start putting it into practice. Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you, Father, that each and every one of them would take this glory, the smell of the glory of God is in this room right now. And it's glorious. It's exactly that. Who can smell that? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, but there's a wonderful aroma with it. See, it's manifesting the aroma, the glory. See, God, it's a sweet smelling thing. The glory of God is before the, in the old temple. It used to be before the, the, uh, curtain before going into the Holy of Holies. It was at the altar of incense, which is the prayer of the saints going up. And that releases the glory. You give him glory in these meetings when you worship, and the, tonight was it was spectacular. The glory of God was being released here as you were worshipping tonight. And that's what you're receiving back now. You're smelling that wonderful glory of God. I think you've had enough. Father, I just thank you, Lord. Father, if this meeting is of you and I've spoken what I've learnt from you over the years and you want these 
No, I can't get away from that wonderful. <laughs> it is beautiful. It's just the most beautiful thing. Please reveal it to them even as they sleep tonight. Let this wonderful aroma of God follow them home in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I think we're done.